Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my sister's husband's surgery with my inheritance slash college money? Context. My sister, female 27, and I, 18, female, lost our dad a year ago. He was my only parent as mom was never in mine or my sister's life. Dad left money, inheritance, for me and sister, and she used her inheritance to get new cars and renovate her house. I live with my aunt right now because my brother-in-law didn't let me stay with my sister, and I'm planning on using my inheritance money to pay for college tuition. I've always wanted to be doctor but haven't decided which branch yet. My sister and I haven't been close. It started after she got married to her chronically ill husband, who was allowed to make backhanded comments about dad and mock his illness and make a scene at his funeral, only because he's ill and should be held accountable for his behavior. I've distanced myself, but my sister kept visiting a lot lately venting about my brother-in-law's condition. He's been in and out of hospital for heart problems and in need of a surgery. She brought up my inheritance many several times, but I ended up cutting the conversation. She then straight up asked if I could help pay for her husband's surgery, and that should pay it back in less than a year. I felt uneasy because if I give her money for my inheritance, which is a large amount, then there's no guarantee she'll pay me back before it's time to apply for college. I'm taking a year gap, but I know my sister can't pay back that much and I felt I was risking my future. So I refused to help, and she had a meltdown at my aunt's house, calling me heartless and cruel with no empathy. She said that her husband's health should be a priority, and I needed to help because education is nothing compared to someone's health, and asked if I'd be happy to see her as a widow and my nephew with no father. My aunt suggested others pay, but most of them cut my sister and her husband off. I argued that her husband's poor health isn't my fault, after she kept blaming and guilt-tripping me. She kept crying, and although my aunt decided to stay out of it, she said that I should be prepared for permanent damage to my relationship with my sister if I don't help her now. She's been sending texts and pictures of her family, telling me this is what I was saying no to. A happy, healthy family with a healthy husband and father. I cried and felt like I was being selfish and not good aunt and sister. I asked my friend about it, and he said let them sell the cars and all the luxurious stuff they bought to afford the surgery, and warned me that if I give them the money, I'll never get it back and may not be able to go to medical school. Now for the top comments. Your friend is correct. You'll never get the money back because sister isn't willing to give up her luxurious lifestyle. She chose how to spend her inheritance, didn't save for a rainy day, and isn't entitled to yours because of her poor financial planning. Not day hole. I'm not sure whether they still have anything of value, because I remember my aunt talking about my sister selling her car in May. Cars depreciate in value quickly. It still isn't your problem that she decided to spend all of her inheritance unwisely. They're trying to live outside of their means as a family, which means if you give any money, be prepared to not get it back. Don't be surprised if you keep getting asked for more until you're left with nothing. You can have this relationship with your sister, or you can pay for medical school. You can't have both. But your sister and her husband seem toxic, so distancing from them should be your first step. Not stay home. I agree. I think sister torpedoed the idea of family when she left her 17-year-old sister scrambling for a home. I hope he wasn't family then. Not day home. Your sister chose to spend money she got less than a year ago in expensive things, instead of planning for the future like you did. Easy come, easy go as they say. Do not give them a penny of your money. They have options they don't want to take, and that's not on you. You're not getting that money back if you lend it. You'll become a fine doctor someday. I'm rooting for you. And she did all that knowing her husband was chronically ill and would inevitably need medical care of some kind, which gets expensive quick. It should have been a no-brainer for the sister to stash her inheritance aside in anticipation of needing it for medical bills. Instead, she spent it selfishly, like assuming she could bully Opie into cuffing up her share when sister finally needed it. Not day home. Your sister is manipulating you. She received the same money you did. If her husband is chronically ill, then she should have saved that money for his care, instead of spending it on luxury items. She probably always planned to spend her money on yours. Will refusing to give her the money damage your relationship with her? Probably. But do you really want to give up your future to preserve the relationship you have with her now? Because it sounds like a terrible one. And don't think that giving her this money will improve the relationship at all. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for not wanting to help financially support my sister-in-law's family while she tries to make their circumstances better? 
This is something that has bothered me the last few days, so I want to get some honest feedback here. My husband and I come from very different backgrounds. He came from a pretty wealthy family and never really needed to worry about school slash work because he and his sister were cuddled by their parents and spoiled. But he always had this ambition to be a vet and thankfully he was willing to work towards it. While I came from a dirt poor family. My parents were both addicts too. And I have dyslexia and was unsupported at home or in school because my parents never took the steps to get me help but I was able to muddle through. I ended up with a GED and I went to community college. Eventually found my talent with numbers and was able to get a solid job once I realized I did have the ability. It was hard, but we worked hard though. And I don't say this to brag, but because it was so hard for me, I have less sympathy for my sister-in-law than my husband does because she made choices that led her here. But anyway, she's married, was living off her husband's job, but now they have five kids under seven and they're struggling. My husband gave her money before, should say borrowed, but it was never paid back, and that was fine. But now she asked him if we would agree to lend some financial assistance while she gets an education to broaden her job horizons. She said it would take two years. We could document every cent and she would pay it all back. She said she knows she needs to do better for her family and that her husband can't shoulder it all anymore. My husband asked me what I thought and I was honest. I wasn't okay with supporting them for two years because it means putting some of our wishes on hold for quite a bit. We wanted to buy a gaming PC for our family which we had saved for. We wanted to fix up our basement too so we can use it. Those two things would cost money that we would only have in our emergency fund if we start to give his sister money. And it's selfish, I know. But we work so hard for it. And I'm finally in a place where I can realistically do stuff like this and I don't want to give it up. My husband said he understood and he told his sister no. She was pissed and she blamed me despite him saying we didn't feel comfortable contributing for two years. She knows her brother and knew he would do it in a heartbeat if it was just his decision, which she would. And she told me the kids are ultimately the ones who suffer and will grow up just like me. And she hopes I can live with that. My husband told her that wasn't called for, but she's kind of right. Without making these changes and working towards the better, nothing will change for them. And they're already struggling on one income and her not having any skills for a job. So tell me Reddit, am I the a-hole? Edited to Ed, should have also mentioned my husband's parents no longer had the wealth they once did. Hence them not helping. Not the a-hole. You worked to provide for your family, not someone else's family. What if after two years she still doesn't find a job or gets pregnant? She chose to have five kids. She needs to take responsibility for them. That was my thought too. Or if she quits part of the way too because it's too tough. A lot of possibilities have crossed my mind. Not day hall. I don't wish to be disrespectful to your sister-in-law, but with five kids under seven? I think the likelihood of her quitting is unfortunately pretty high. This feels like you're being asked to fund her middle-class self-improvement fantasy instead of her doing the actual thing that would help her family, which is to go and get a job. Not the a-hole. Student loans exist for the exact reason she's trying to use you as her bank. Of course, you actually have to pay those back, unlike her track record of paying you back. Don't take responsibility for a situation you had nothing to do with creating. Not the a-hole. Thankfully, your husband backed you and stood up for you. Since she plans to document every cent and pay you back, she can get an educational loan instead from you. Given her history, I doubt you would ever see a penny back if you loaned her money. With five kids, there would always be an excuse as to why she could not repay you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not sharing my car with my stepbrother? My parents are divorced but cordial. My mother married my stepdad when I was 11. I have a stepbrother who is my age and a half-brother who is four. My dad recently bought me a new car for my birthday and my brother also had bought a car which he bought with his money. It was secondhand but in good condition. Just a few days after I got my car, he had a crash in which his car was severely damaged. This was not the first time he was reckless with a car. Earlier, he had almost crashed his father's car as well, with me in the backseat and his father in the front. It is one of the reasons my stepdad refused to buy him a car. A few days back when I returned from my friend's house who lived nearby, I saw my car gone from the driveway. I immediately ran into the house and started looking, asking my mom and stepdad about it. My stepdad looked bewildered. 
But my mom calmly got up from her seat and told me she had given my car to my stepbrother to go visit his friends who live quite some distance away. I started to panic and ask her why she would do that. She simply said that it's what siblings do. And from then on, me and my stepbrother could use the car on alternate days. By this point, my stepdad had come over to us and told her she shouldn't have done it without my permission. I told her if anything happened to the car, then she would have to pay. She agreed. Well, something did happen. Stepbrother crashed a car. Hood, headlines, and airbags needed to be replaced. I informed my father about this, and after assessing the damage and him learning what led to this, he immediately said either stepbrother or mother has to pay for part of the repair cost which the insurance doesn't cover. My mother tried to negotiate, but he wouldn't budge. She asked stepdad and he wouldn't help either, so she had to give the money from her savings. Yesterday, after the car had come back from the mechanic, she came to me to ask for my car keys. I asked what was up, and she reminded me of the alternative day policy. I told her she was out of her mind to even think I would share the car with my stepbrother after all this, but she just said she had promised stepbrother his share of days, and that is also the reason she had a car repaired so both of us could use it. I took the car keys and locked the door for my room. She then called me ungrateful, and my stepbrother said I was depriving him of meeting his friends and he was suffering, but my stepdad later came and put a stop to it. The only reason I think I might be the a-hall is because I know my stepbrother wasn't lying about his mental health issues. He has had to see a therapist because of it. His friends have been really helpful in his struggle with his mental health, and my mother did say she would pay for the damages. So, I don't know. Should I just give my stepbrother another chance? Am I the a-hall? Also, I did offer to drive my brother to his friends, but he straight up refused saying it would embarrass him. Now for the comments. Not the a-hall. Apparently, he is more concerned with his embarrassment than his mental health issues. Tell him to Uber. I agree. His mental health issues are, you guessed it, his issues. He shouldn't be driving, much less Opie's car. Opie was also nice enough to offer to drive stepbrother to his friend's house who lived far away. Not day hole. I work in insurance. Holy hell. How are they affording coverage for this kid? It is probably about 4000 for six months at this rate. And why does mom think Opie's ungrateful? She didn't get her the car. Her dad did. Why should Opie be grateful to mom for giving her car to her brother who promptly crashed it? Not today, Hall. This kid is constantly crashing cars. And his own mother thinks it's a smart and reasonable idea to let him keep getting behind the wheel. Get bent. He can take public transit or get a ride from someone. Not even his mom. It's the stepbrother or stepmother who's bending over backwards. It makes literally zero sense. Not an a-hole. She can let him use her car if it's so important for him to drive. Exactly. If she thinks it's that important, she can cart him around. If you think riding with your brother is embarrassing, imagine being chauffeured by mom. Not an a-hole. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to do my stepdaughter's dishes and laundry? My husband and I share three kids, his daughter 12 and son 11 from his first marriage, who we have full custody of and have lived with full time since they were toddlers, and our daughter, 7. Lately, our oldest, who we'll call Amy, has been acting out towards me. She's constantly saying that I'm lazy and do nothing around the house, and undermining me in front of her siblings. Whenever I ask her to do anything, she'll grumble and call me things like lazy idiot under her breath. The other day, when I asked the kids to clean up the mess they left on the table, I heard her tell her brother that I wasn't their real mom, and that they didn't have to listen to me. I have no idea where this came from, as I have always thought of myself as their mom, and have done everything but legally adopt them as my own. I don't have the kids to do a lot of chores, but I just ask they keep their rooms clean. My husband usually makes dinner as he is a much better cook than I am, but I do the dishes. I vacuum and mop the floors once a week, clean the cat litter boxes, and do everyone's laundry. Last night, when I asked Amy to clean up some paint supplies she left scattered on the floor, she called me a lazy jerk who expects her to do everything. I said, fine then. She can do her own chores from now on. Sure enough, after dinner, I did everyone's dishes but hers. I also did laundry this morning but left hers in her hamper. When I told her she had to do her own dishes and laundry, she exploded and went crying to my husband who said I was being too harsh and singling her out. I'm really at my wit's end here. I tried asking her if she wants to talk. I've tried being nice, 
I've tried being firm. Am I really being the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She is simply being a rebellious teenager. But you and your husband need to get on the same page and try to get this behavior under control. Otherwise, it will spiral quickly. You say she's leaving paint supplies out. I'd say give her 10 minutes to clean it up or it's going in the bin. Added to add that this was meant to be portrayed as a joke. It was something my mom used to say as a way to get us to clean things we wouldn't. There was once a time she had a wee in her cupboard while saying she had binned it. Needless to say, when we got it back a few weeks later, it was always packed away. Not day haul. Teens, oh boy. I have two, 13 and 15. Some days shaking my head. I swear I'm going to roll my eyes one too many times and they'll be permanently stuck that way. I agree you and your husband must be on the same page. Teens will push and push to see how far they can. You both must be the wall and teach them rules, boundaries, and consequences. It's not easy, and sure as heck not fun. What you did isn't harsh. Harsh would be trying to teach her a lesson by having her do everyone's chores instead of just her own. What you did was hold her accountable, and she didn't like it. That's why she ran to her dad. Not day hall. But I would like to know what your husband's take on her horrible behavior is. If he wants to talk harsh, then ask him about what she's been doing to you. Compared to what you've described, what you did was downright tame. Unless he wants to find himself in a position where he is literally choosing between his wife and his daughter, he needs to daddy up and deal with his child. Not day hall. Your oldest doesn't seem to have a problem bad-mouthing and claiming you don't do anything. So you only not educate her, but gave her a fair consequence. I say bravo, 